dark secret that I never talked about. I never discussed it and um, felt like I was the only one that it was happening to or that it had happened to. And it was just very scary and sad and, um, you know, just something I didn't want to. Yeah, there's just. Yeah, you just kind of keep it all locked inside and don't want to have to deal with it. And so you end up you know, down this self-destructive path and dealing with, do, deal, trying to self-medicate and do it yourself. And um, through this process, kind of realizing that, that there's another way, you know. Yeah, and, and I think also because the, 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 the abuser or the, or the bad guy in the story was such a, 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 a guy who was respected in the community, right? So well that, connected. That, that made, I mean, that yeah. shows that shows in the letters. Yeah, you know, it shows in the in the letters of support how connected and how much deeper this rabbit hole goes that I wasn't even aware of. And and this happens in in like in in kids TV show, in in movies, in music business as well. Like that that was the the standard in the nineties. Well, I 2000s. think it happens in every industry. I don't mm-hmm. think that it's selected. Just I mean. You had mentioned the Catholic Church, and mm. um, it, I mean, it happens in in sports and in schools, and in I mean, it's 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 everywhere. Um, but my experience just happens to have been in. Uh, yeah, yeah, but the, but the common denominator is the emotional abuse. Yeah, right. right? Like yeah. everybody's struggle with the emotional abuse yeah. on set, or what was it like? Yeah, I mean, it's a difficult. I mean. It, it, it's not just specifically Nickelodeon or specifically kids TV. It's just, a, it's a, it's a, it's a tough industry for, for young people to be in because you're instantly thrown into an adult world. You have such huge responsibilities. There's millions of dollars at play. There's deadlines. There's a lot, a lot going on. So you, you're thrust into this world where all of a sudden, you know, you're not just worried about, getting your homework turned in on time yeah your work you have all of this other responsibility that's so foreign to you at that age so you're kind of like it's a lot of a lot of pressure yeah and it's too much to process i can imagine like the because it's your first encounter with fame Mm -hmm. with getting recognition you're making like this machine that 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 spits out episodes and and it's like too much to process that you're on on automatic pilot right yeah exactly exactly and you there's nothing to prepare you for it Mm. i mean there's nothing to prepare you for walking out your door and having cameras in your face and people invading every aspect of your life and everything being written about and 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 all of this it you know you you go into it wanting to just do what you love which is make people laugh and entertain or make music or perform on stage and and uh you know there's no textbook of well, there's all this ancillary stuff that comes along with this. So get ready and we're going to prepare you for that. You're just kind of thrown to the wolves. Yeah. All, all this all this happened where you were still on the Amanda show, right? Yeah. And then you started Drake and Josh. Yeah. How did you cope with that dark secret that, that you were hiding? Like, were, were there like any other uh, things that, that came to life because of that? Like... Do you have problems like with rehab or, or? Oh, definitely. I mean, all throughout my life, I've struggled with all of this. So, like I said earlier, it's like you self-medicate, you, you start, you know, self-destructive behavior, just trying to escape and trying to numb and trying to, you know. I should have picked up Legos a long time ago. <laughs> Earlier. <laughs> um, but, but, but you medicate yeah, like, like anxiety you, or, or, or what were you feeling? Oh, anxiety, shame, um, embarrassment, uh, just everything all at once, you know, and uh, self-loathing and just so many, so many emotions that just happening all at once that you just, you know, you just want to escape it and, you know, take a mind vacation. And unfortunately, a lot of things that uh, are accessible uh, in this world to facilitate that, even though it's temporary, uh, are really damaging. 
Yeah. Yeah, and you want to escape and continue to be productive. It, it, it's, exactly. a, it's a really delicate balance, right? Mm -hmm. Because you cannot escape totally. You, you need to... You still have your responsibilities. Yeah. You still have your call times. You still have your deadlines. You still have... You know, you still want to continue working. Um, yeah, because you work so hard to be in that spot. Exactly. So you don't want to miss the opportunity because of the afflictions that you got. Yeah. So you need to escape, but also be productive, which which is the perfect recipe for a disaster. To total recipe yeah. for disaster. And how long were you in this in this state? I think it's been a long time, a really long time. Um, I mean, this was I was fourteen, fifteen when this was going on, and I think. Uh, It's, I've struggled with it my whole life. You know, I think just recently in the past, you know, two years, um, really working through it all, you know, going to therapy, uh, rehab situations, uh, just being around people that for the first time in my life, I realized, you know, just want to see me get better and are empathetic to my situation and, Um, the more that you talk about it and the more you get it out, it's not like this ball of sludge and tar that's trapped inside. It starts being able to chip away and melt and melt that. And it just becomes smaller and smaller and smaller until, I mean, it's always, it's always there. It's always going to be there, but hopefully just in a way where it's easier to uh, process. Yeah. Know? And and I imagine it's also important uh, to to be around people that have like good habits, because we are at the end of the day as so social creatures, yeah. and we're really influenced by the people we surround ourselves with. Yeah, I mean, show me your friends, I'll yeah, show you your future. It's it's really important to keep people around you that are positive uh, influences that are supporting you, um, just want to see you do well, and and that are honest. You know, sometimes. Uh, brutally honest and saying, hey man, you know, not just people that are going to go, yeah, dude, everything you're doing is awesome. Yeah. And who cares if you're doing this or that? Like, let's go party. Let's go get this done. Let's go do this. And it, um, keeping people around you that will call you on the carpet and say like, hey man, like you're, this is, this is not a good path that you're going down. And And having people that you trust when they do say things like that, that you're not immediately going to be like, okay, well, I don't want that person in my life anymore. He's, yeah, you know, get him away. <laughs> He keeps telling me what to do or telling me I'm doing this when I want to do this over here and telling me, you know, and having people that you trust to say, oh, okay. Um, I should probably take a look at what actions I'm making yeah. or what behaviors I'm doing right now. If this person who I really trust has, uh, said like hey man this is a red flag like you might want to yeah. step back and take a look at this